and the <clears throat> clock on the wall says six o'clock so it must be time for the dork table i'm still flash somebody and uh we're gonna get through a dork table without Vinny or mary today again folks so what i need to stall while i put the date and show thing into the box for grimner anyway we're at reallibertymedia.com and that gets carried over at a few other places too but usually Vinny remembers all those details in the show and I get lost without my notes anyway so today I had a really good good idea come to my mind today I want to think about uh, the the perversion of definition and I got the idea from listening to a couple of shows Mary talks about it occasionally but they usually they describe it as uh, the way we understand the, a word that we use in a common day, right? But then what we think it means, well, it means that to us, but it doesn't mean that to the people that wrote the words down in the first place. So apparently there is a, a Webster's Dictionary for us, and then there's another dictionary for everybody else that doesn't do what we do. Anyway, so let's get started here. I say hey to everybody at the uh, RLM. I got got your date and name in there correctly. Didn't confuse it with uh, the thing I do with Vinny, you know, in a perfect world. But it's about the same thing, so give or take. Anyway, we got Barman, Grimner, Moose Girl, Anti. Oops, I skipped over Kate, didn't I? Uh... And, sorry, Kate. Anti, Chalcedony, Chloe, Cyber, Cyborg Noodle, D underscore C, Echelon, Me, Abidon C, J Dread, Layer 8, Poxified, Poxphone, Ponsas, Rain, RLM Fluke, Rome Skittle, Phantom, the Phantom's here, uh, Asmo 2, as in also, Colfax 101, uh, Frumpy from Canada, Nadida. Frumpy 3, I guess he's from another place. Graham Z, Gromit, Java Doctor 2, Jays, Nines, Jays, and Kozu, and Sock Puppet. And yeah, I heard, uh, I read, anyway, early this morning, I think, or yesterday, Jays, Nines, and Jays of Scotland isn't going to be broadcasting anymore. Don't know the details of it exactly. I took it as... Uh, intervention from the system more than his equipment wasn't holding up so mm. i guess if you know you know and if you don't know it's probably not all that interesting but a couple of things on my mind first off uh, i've been watching this couple from nevada they got a, a bit bit shoot uh, link it's it's about walking their dog you know that's the the point of the thing and they have a 15 20 minute chatter about daily events and this and that anyway today they got booted off uh the edited off of um youtube because i guess the title of their the title and it's so clean and wholesome and all that kind of stuff it's a just two people you know having a conversation about whatever's going on and until today i really hadn't heard them go out of their way to do any real swearing or get any attention in that area but they're mocking it. They really seemed a little bit, a little pissed off about being uh, censored off of face or uh, off YouTube, YouTube, Facebook, Google. It's all the same to me. I mean, for fuck's sake, when I open up my uh, Linux on the other computer, I see Google across the top of the screen. And if I thought we took the Windows off it, so to get rid of all that shit, so Google's in everything, you know. Anyway, the perversion of definition strikes me probably on a daily basis. You know, and again, to start out with, what do, what do people usually argue about would be their constitutional rights. Okay, now I got learned about all this constitution stuff. I guess maybe a a different reality of it because. I learned real young with uh, being arrested that you don't have any rights. Had a cop tell me that when I was about 14. He said, you don't have any rights. Shut up. 
And apparently they were right, too, by the way. Um, so as I went through life, I guess the the law found its way to prove itself to me to be exactly the opposite of what I was raised to believe it was. Hmm. Jutube, that's right, Mr. Grimnardo. The, uh, the Jews are getting fussy. I think what it is, is they're trying to discourage small groups from getting anywhere. Because I've been seeing these people, and they have a, just like a steady, constant, um, same numbers. They don't, it's not growing, but they do a radio podcast on Sunday nights, too. So that might be, you know, more of their, um, the support that they have, but they got on the bit shoot and I got, I seen it and I thought, man, eh, I like dogs. See what they got to say. Listen to them for a bit. And they are uh, middle of the road. I don't think they prefer the Dems over the Republicans and they live in Las Vegas. It's a hard town to live in because of the way things have gone or they just celebrated a year, uh, a year, October the 1st of the year ago massacre in Vegas. Ay, ay, ay. The massacre in Vegas. I would never believe the things that I read and hear about today. I would just have had thought they were films. <laughs> not not anything you could go look at. And Then Mary was talking about aspartame. And then she'd stop using it. And so it, they, I know they renamed it to put it in shit and just called it something else. But I googled it just before the show to see if I could find out what it was <laughs> and it led me back to the original information about aspartame it's going to replace um, saccharin you know that crap they had before it in 1982 so the link the information didn't give me anything just like usual you open up something and you, you got a question and it leads you to the shit that you were told that's not true in the first place so, what are we going to do? What, you ain't got nothing to say to me today. I just YouTube. Wow. I guess the uh, last one, Woody had to go to work. <laughs> Rob Rob Works had a party to go to. <laughs> so, my hardcore my hardcore captives aren't with me today on that. Even Vinny's not hanging around. <laughs> it's one of those days. Uh, anyway, it's all illegal. Just ask any lawyer, they'll tell you. They didn't put you in jail for things that you didn't even know you're doing wrong. You just got to ask the right cop. <laughs> I, think, I think it was Rob that put up a, a link of a, a guy's at a gas station, and, and he's surrounded by cops. I don't know what he's doing in the car, but he's refusing to get out of the car. It's a convertible, and he's just roasting each cop verbally calling them names and this and he finally gets to the last guy and he makes the last cop laugh <laughs> so, so i guess maybe 20 percent of the force has a sense of humor hmm. we'll use that as a positive statistic and there's something that mary read wednesday night i think i'm just going to go ahead and see if it inspires my brain corp suckles to Think of something different and new, you know, because I guess the reason we started to do this, me and Mary, was to uh, get a break from, you know, all the information and all the knowledge and, and all the news and all the damage and destruction going on. You know, people trying to love each other with a, you know, butt or a barrel of a gun. <laughs> I find it amusing. I I just think that. The more it goes on, the more common it is, and the less resistance it gets. People don't care if you're fighting or not. They just don't fight with me. And then they go home and watch football. <laughs> or, or go down to the bar and have a couple dozen drinks and talk about how fucked up the Pope is because he lets all his under guys go around and poke all the little kids. But here we are in the 21st century of all places, right? We have information and knowledge that surpasses anybody before us. I mean, don't be feeling too lonely there, Flasher. Nah, it's just different without Vinny to interrupt, you know, when he gets on one of his rants. But uh, anyway, um, because there's no price to free, see? 
This is how this whole damn game that we live in works. We have people convinced that uh, the lazy will take advantage of the worker and and the worker will slave and the, the lazy will take advantage and, you know, that's what we know. And they do it through all the MSM that they can get their hands on. So if you have any uh, opinion other than what's real popular right now, <laughs> Yeah, you might as well just keep it to yourself because the people that share it with you already do and the people that don't aren't going to. We're we're in big, uh, what would I call it? I'm watching this thing burn from a distance in my perspective. Maybe for you guys it's doing really good. All the, you know, all the MSM stuff says, oh, the economy's up and the this is up and Donald's still got all his hair and everybody's a happy fucking camper. Then I look at the numbers and I start to wonder because there there's even links questioning the twenty trillion dollar <laughs> debt to I guess the Martians because the Rothschilds ain't gonna step up and say, Yeah, that's our money and we want it. <laughs> <laughs> so a, as a planet we're we're living under the threat of uh always being foreclosed upon by our creditors. <laughs> you know, is it's amazing. Just they just uh, directed us into this way of life. I mean, I seen a film once and it had a bunch of wagon trains on it and there may be 80 people all together. There's a couple of families and some wagon trains. And they're going to go find, they're going to go grab some land. Well, you know, the land's still there, but you can't do that anymore. <laughs> Sorry to laugh about it, but things changed a little bit since, uh, I don't know, 1800, <laughs> Oh, I got slapped around for that, too. There's a there's a constitution that you know that and then there's a constitution that you live under. And the one that you live under is not the original constitution. Not only that, but I think the Patriot Act kind of put the constitution on a back shelf somewhere and uh <laughs> Hey, good. I hope you get a good dog, doc, cuz I'm sitting here my dog at the at my side on the floor, laying there all quiet like like a dog should when I'm doing the radio. <laughs> so I hope you get a good one. And uh, Hannah's a lot closer to Cirque anyway as far as the activity and all that kind of stuff. So I just, I don't know. I just like to know she's around. But we're not a, a hug she's not a huggy lovey dog <laughs> Cirque needed a chihuahua and she got like a a version of me <laughs> in a dog suit it's kind of funny anyway well people got hey yeah saturday i did i did this show with mary because uh and picked saturday but mostly because she was doing the the weekend uh the weekdays friday wednesday and friday Nobody uh nobody likes to commit to Saturday to do something like this. Are you kidding? Got other things in the world that are way more important to be done. Saturday uh isn't a loafer's day. It's really it's a catch up on the shit you didn't finish during the weekday. Sunday's a loafer day, I think. Uh oh. We got incoming um stuff. Hmm. You'll know, you'll see the dog, the dog will see you, and you know it. You can tell by looking at him. It's hard to explain, but been there. And uh, Cirque did good picking out our Hannibal, can the Cannibal Lecter. I like her. She's a good girl. Anyway, but back to the perversion of definition has got me looking on this life in a different light than most of the people that I encounter. You know, yeah, but... uh. I don't know. It doesn't bother me so much, but I can see their faces when I bring up certain topics. Even here in Denmark, there's there's topics that are just uh, better left avoided because people in their life are sick. And if they don't know what I know about Rockefeller medicine, for example, 
because at a time I didn't know any better than they did. The difference was there was no one coming to, to, coming out to me saying, hey, you know what these people are doing? I had to go find it, trip over it, or it was it wasn't offered to me on a silver platter with a you know little golden things around it. I had to dig for it. Plus, I think that the catch to the thing is, if you see a doctor and you don't feel good, of course he's going to find something wrong with you. That's what his job is to decipher your problem. Okay, so. It's not that the doctors are so much doing anything wrong. It's that we're being taken advantage of because of our lack of information about the truth. You know, they got the FDA and all these good government goddamn groups in there helping you out. And like I've said about 50 times, you have these senators are retired doctors and present day working lawyers. And they're in there writing the damn law so that. Their buddies at Goldman Sachs and Coca-Cola and whatever corporation bribed them that day can get the results they want from the law. And here we are. Oh, okay. Try arguing about it sometime. You usually get your ass handed to you, get called names. Ran into a guy on the RLM yesterday, I think it was. and He didn't like me, didn't like Cirque. You know, because me and Cirque are... mm, we're not your average <laughs> social beings, I suppose. And Cirque's got a, I don't know. Her English is not as well written as, as her speaking. So she writes things that even sometimes I have to read twice to make sure she, I got what she was saying. Ah, a relaxing sip of elixir. Anyway. So, yeah, I'm chitter-chattering with this fellow the other morning, and it turned into a complete nightmare. I'm a total idiot, that sort of thing. I'm stupid. I don't know this. I don't know that. And, you know, all I said was, well, the guy's been prepping for 15 years. And I said, well, I've been partying for 40. (laughs) I've got no reason or interest to prep anything. You know, I'd be amazed if I wake up in the morning tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Maybe that's where my main difference with the rest of the, you know, interactions with people is, is that I really don't don't count on tomorrow. I ain't got through today yet. You're already worried about what we're going to do for next Wednesday. <laughs> and people, like my wife and others, usually... Uh, Give me a funny look when I say stuff like that. They don't quite... I'm not sure if they know if I mean it or not, or if the tone that I delivered in is appropriate, but I think I mean it. Hell, I ain't got through today, so... You know, because the FBI could send Sergeant Fenton S. Periwinkle over here to shoot me dead because I have a, a little radio ditty thing I do a couple times a week with a friend in America. Excuse me. I'm sure I'm breaking some fucking code or something of the FBI's. But it would cost them a lot to get here. I'll tell you that. Um I where where we're at is so so isolated. If if people pushed up this way, we'd end up in the water. So there's there's you know, strategically you're not going to get pushed from land. You're going to get pushed from sea and there's a big still plant out there, so I don't know. Those Vikings are going to run into shit when they come come out here to, to do their hoarding and pillaging. <laughs> and then most of the people here are too old to hoard and pillage anyway. They don't give a shit anymore. All that, um, I don't know what it is. Some people, I heard it explained to me that uh, at a certain age, you come to a choice of if you've had enough or if you want more. And... I think I came to the, I've had enough. I just want enough. I don't want more of any fucking thing. Just enough, whatever enough is. And maybe that too. That could be, (laughs) yeah, looking up my ass for uranium. You never know where those terrorists may be hiding the uranium. Fucking people, man. They think that uh, 
a group of people that live in a desert are sophisticated enough to group and conquer us from the outside in you know where we live when this is so obviously an inside job from all countries that are participating in it fortunately whoa the danes they ain't so hot on the damn uh, immigration stuff they don't they don't want to lose their culture they had a couple of little mishaps and they no no that's enough put it in the paper for all the public to see and said okay we're stopping this crap and i i would hope <laughs> that people pay heed to the uh i don't know the wants of the population not not the wants of the eu cuz that's what all that shit's about eu un i don't know they say usa and uk but I, I, maybe they're just pawns in this game, this bigger game. Under, <laughs> what do you guys call it? The uh, deep state. <laughs> deep state. We get fucked in the ass by the people on the front of the state, and you guys are worried about a deep state? Oh, what a waste of time that is. When you look at the, after you get done with the money and the medicine and religion, what what do you got left? What haven't they got into yet? Well, yeah, but, you think I'm joking, but, you know, if you go to an airport and try to fly somewhere, you know what they do? They make you take off your shoes because some guy did it like 20 years ago and had matches. He was going to make a bomb out of his shoe like Maxwell Smart, you know. So the collective intelligence level isn't high enough to understand a bluff from a reality. All you got to do is just threaten them. In, in English, anyway. I don't know what, what it's like here so much. But just threaten people in English. And by God, they'll cower and call the law. And they'll have the FBI on you. And searching your butt crack for all that alien stuff that you probably got up there. It's a wonderful game, I suppose. And it makes a few people a lot of money. But the overall of it. I don't understand why, um, <laughs> yeah, deep throat state. <laughs> I don't understand why the the population is so easily tricked by these obviously lying, two faced pieces of shit they call leaders. Nothing they've ever done ever comes out the way they tell you it will when they start it. <laughs> and the only thing that ends is the presidency, and then they put in another puppet. And, it, oh, hey, I've been reading stuff about Trump lately. <laughs> oh, God. Well, it's kind of, it's interesting to me because, well, the public is, is so easily manipulated with whatever they're manipulated with to get them to support either side of this coin. That's the same fucking coin. If it wasn't, they couldn't take Obama out and just have Trump sit in his chair. Why, they'd have to replace every fucking body, wouldn't they? But no, they only replace some people, you know, for the show. <laughs> That's That way Sergeant Fenton can someday become Lieutenant, Lieutenant Fenton as Perry Winkle of the FBI. <laughs> yeah, it's all illegal anyway. Let's see. Let me go over my notes and see if I can run across an intelligent thought that we haven't burned out on the dork table. Usually like to tell jokes and read shit, but uh, eh, you're stuck with me off the cuff for no particular reason. Oh, yeah. And which way does this go? Tax is a punishment for doing something correctly. <laughs> and a fine is a payment for getting caught. Something like that. But both of them, eh. People think we can't, we couldn't survive without them. No, the people that couldn't survive without them are all the people that make all that money doing nothing because they've got this imaginary police force to manage. You know, that's real, but what management do they do? <laughs> I mean, come on. Guy makes three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars a year to sit in a chair and what? If if he was working, why would we be drinking fluoride in the water? Eh, they're not working. What are they doing? 
What do they spend all their time doing? Maybe they're all on the internet playing um, internet games. Let's see. They're putting up links. The Grimner is on the creepy survey. Ask fifth graders about their sex lives. Well, there you go. What the fuck? Fifth grade. My God. That's a little bit young. See, that's society curving the fucking stone to make it look the way they want it to. Because, you know, if you just leave kids alone, they're going to figure it out themselves. But they're probably going to be old enough at that that point to make a a semi-intelligent decision. But you start pushing them at five and six and when they're all... Uh, living in fantasy land and watching cartoons real heavy and all that kind of crap, you're not going to get a good result out of that. So, I mean, by we're not taught from an early age uh, a proper, proper isn't even a good word for it, a decent, honest, yeah, let's go with, um, I heard this the other day too, original honesty, okay. I don't know exactly what it means by definition, but I sure like the sound of it because I'm one of the few people on the, you know, the internet that thinks of, you know, if we weren't all lying to each other about every fucking thing we do every day to survive, and how I mean lying to each other about it is we're accepting this second rate shit we don't understand because, hey, they said it was okay. Nobody will get up there and say hey what the fuck and when you do they give somebody a a, a little bit of an audience like uh what was his name um ron paul there's a good example see they got this three party system <clears throat> right but what they do is they really do know the few and that are going to lean towards liberty as a basis aren't going to ever join either of the other two sides so they kind of push you out and then if you don't push out, then you're forced to choose one of the other two sides. Well, let's talk about sex. Fifth grader sex lives is part of the Deep Throat State's plan. I believe that. The more fucked up your children are, the more fucked up your adults are. There, there you have that. I mean, crying out loud. Look around. I, I don't see the same world that I read about or see on the internet. The world I see is very innocent and peaceful, and they've got ducks in the middle of the town where people go, and um, everybody tells me that this is an atheist country. They're, they do not side with anybody's religious practices. I went, whoa, ho, 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 ho. But the church is still the biggest building in in the city area, but it's the least used. I think the public toilets get more traffic than the uh, the church does. And there's no re- nobody here freaks out like in America where it's been made law. You have to recognize these people for their behaviors. Or their, how do you even categorize this without any damn... Uh, I need facts. Oh, I need some facts. Now you got a guy that's dressed as a woman or a woman that's dressed in a guy as a guy and they want to use the appropriate bathroom. That just sounds like some kind of costume game they're playing to to get attention in public and not like those kind of people probably ain't gonna do anything to your kids in the first place. They're just attention whores looking to make it on you know, get on the news or not news. <laughs> that's how old I am. But to, you know, get a link and be on YouTube so that 50 million people can see them in their weird state of attire, you know, and not hurting anybody. See, it's all a story. We're just here using the bathroom. And I figure, well, if it didn't matter, well, why not just use the one that your parts belong in? (laughs) Let me grab my shotgun. Grimner's on duck. Hey, I'm trying to load my pipe a little too loud here. Uh, Grimner's on Duck Patrol on the RLM, Real Liberty Media. And anyway, yeah, Java's been over there to the RLO, the new site, posting. I read this early. He's been over there posting like a mofo. Got a lot of stuff to talk about. And uh, I don't know. Do people really understand what it is they're reading? Uh, Here, I'll tell you. 
I was listening to Mary read the same thing, and I want to read a little bit of it just to, just to get my get a taste of this. And it's uh, it's a guy off of uh, Minds.com. I recognize his name, Luminous Sovereign. Okay, not none of that, you know, Luminous Citizen slash you know third party bullshit. Just kind of crazy, but Luminous Sovereign. All right. And what he has to say is as follows. To know freedom is to know nature. Living in harmony with nature leads to peace, prosperity, knowledge, truth, action, and freedom. Nature reflects the order of the universe. Living in opposition to nature leads to war, control, ignorance, fear, stagnation, and enslavement. Well, that's just the first four lines out of a very lengthy little piece of work this fellow wrote. And damn, just that alone in itself takes me down uh, quite a few roads. You know, the uh, the enslavement is obvious to me. I mean, me and Cirque have a however long 20-year mortgage or whatever the fuck it is on paper here uh, to live inside. And that's our enslavement. You know, because if we don't do that, well, then we can't have all the luxuries of the 21st century because everything is controlled one way or another way by some form of government, unless you want to live rough and circle lights, indoor plumbing, and I'm not a plumber. What am I going to (laughs) do? So, I mean, you know, I I had to think quick and make a decision. So I figured, well... America wasn't all that great when I was there last. Let's see what I'm going to find here. And although I find the to- the politics here just as uh, intrusive in the overall, I don't find them enforced as severely as I have in other places. And how I mean that is uh, we smoke, we break the law down at the local bar. People have ashtrays, they got cigarettes, we're smoking. But there's a there's a, a an understanding about, you know, that the state likes this and the state likes that and if they but we don't. So let's deal with the problems should they arrive, not shut everything down and, and obey. And I like that that mentality that these people carry they're uh here i'm going to just use those first four lines to use words out of it to pick apart and see if i can't think of something semi-intelligent to talk about today but uh, living in opposition to nature leads to war well does it i mean the evidence in front of me dictates that that's true but what kind of knowledge do you need to have to make sense of what I just read? You know, some people don't get it. I really believe that if you grow up in the city, and I was brought in and out of the city, and I got to go out to the countryside and to the streams. My my dad took us places. So we had a little bit of everything. It wasn't just you know concrete and uh, steel. But I did meet people in my lifetime that themselves had never been out of the area that they were from. Maybe a a trip 30, 40 miles to another city and back, and that was it. They didn't know anything besides their immediate surroundings, and uh, that shocked the hell out of me because I was just a go-bug once upon a time. Now I've settled down. But damn, Grimner, just reading that fifth grade thing is just wow so uh i saw that the uh the scotus got their new relic in in uh i guess implemented (laughs) i can't i can wait forever to find out what nasty horrid shit the upper echelon have in store for you with this new scotus I mean, hell, that guy was involved in writing the Patriot Act, which they finally understand. They wrote that way before 9-11 ever happened. See, 
So they, how could they not know it was going to happen if nah, they knew? Anyway, kind of made it happen, but that's another opinion. So where where are we today as you know as a life form on the planet Earth? Hmm. I would like to see what uh, a good source of drinking water is supposed to be like. Now, I never spent a lot of time thinking about this. Just came up a couple of, about a month ago. I read the story about alkaline water. Well, I'm, we're up here in the middle of nowhere, which shouldn't matter, but I think we had to order what I wanted to get from an American company. So there's a, a lag in the shipping. They're going to make me wait. And for me to get my little things to find out what this is all about could take up to November. So, yeah, I was looking for something I wrote that might be really cool. And stalling with reruns about my alkaline water interest. That kind of came up out of nowhere. I don't know. I guess listening to Mary uh, over the years has really uh, it's opened me up to other things that I probably wouldn't be interested in, like the powders. When Cirque brought it up about rosehip, when I it took me a while, I said, "Nah, I don't, I, I don't think so." But after we moved up here, I got a little softer, and I said, "Okay." And I started to have uh, problems in a, my joint, so I said, "Hey, what's that stuff called again?" <laughs> I'm gonna try it, you know. I did, and since I've been using this stuff, my uh, my joints don't hurt when I move and walk, and I'm trying to take off my sweater here. But, uh, yeah, as I get older, instead of regression, now I've got myself on a program where the things that I put in me, this is Mary talking to, this is what she was saying, the fuel that I put in bring me the results I get out, just like a car, just like any machine that there is, only... My machine has a mind of its own, and it and it can do whatever it wants to do. I've read things that even say that the the cells have a some form of intelligence in the individual cell. Nah, I don't know how they come up with these ideas, how they prove them, but they're fun to talk about. You know, that's why I say I don't know anything outside of experience, but I've got a lot of ideas. And I have a fuckload of opinions about shit that I don't really care about. You know, like the SCOTUS and Trump and the Queen of Denmark and who else? The Queen of England and, you know, all these imaginary f fakes, fucking uh, misdirections that have been laid in front of me so that I can't live my own life. I gotta know all this other shit that, for one, I don't give two flying fucks about. Russia, China, North Korea, Iran, um, Syria. I don't care about any of that. But how I mean I don't care about it is I don't want anything from them. So they don't interest me. If I wanted something from those places, then I'm sure the American in me would come out in a heartbeat. I'd go get me some guns, hire me some fellas, go take me some land. And give all the profits to my king. <laughs> That's what everybody else is doing. And uh, <laughs> it's so convoluted and it's so fucked up. There's there's nowhere to start and make any kind of sense out of any of this. Because we've just all got our own stories, you know. We all have our own interpretations of how this looks and what it means and... I don't I don't see how any of that stuff at the end of the day for me is relevant, you know. Uh what you think of what I think of something. Who gives a flying fuck? But in the moment, if Grim called me a stupid idiot fuck nut right now because I don't like Israel, I think I don't think I'd be have my feelings hurt, but I would it would get my attention, you know. And I would be more interested in what the fuck? Who the be 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 be? Then passing it on and going and finding something that's not so destructive. 
there's something about our destructive side that we use it all the time and we know we shouldn't and it doesn't really feel well i don't feel good when i do it all the time i get a giggle but then later on well that was a drag shouldn't have done that but I do things I shouldn't do. I eat things I shouldn't eat. Hey, Moose, good luck with the dog. I hope you find a nice one. Something that suits your personal taste, because that's what dogs are for. That's why they're not called peers. Animal rights. Hey, speaking of that, have I ever told you crazy dorks out there in Dorkland about how I feel about rights? Rights, when... When I started to really understand back of us, maybe like the 90s or the 80s or something, they were harping about animal rights. Well, I grew up way different than that, where animals come way after humans do, people, mankind. So now they got us so fucked up with words and verbiage, you don't even know how to address a problem anymore because... You're using the wrong freaking word. <laughs> Human is defined as an animal. <laughs> so, but out of habit, because it took me so long to find that out, I still use human. But man, if you say man without woe first, then you're leaving the woes out. And the woes don't want to be left out. The woes want to be in there with you. <laughs> except for the feminists and the magtail people they want to be on an island with goober and hansel oh yeah no good i hope you get what exactly what you're looking for and you never know sometimes you don't see it the first time excuse me dog hunting takes a i don't know it's just a matter of your imp impression of the dogs that you see i suppose but i see a lot of dogs that i'm not attracted to them but hannibal yeah. <laughs> yeah she even has a beard like me we kind of look like twins me and hannibal except her, my nose is longer and uh i can walk on two legs outside of that we're pretty similar <laughs> i'm joking around i'm not that tall but wow how are we <laughs> like for example how would we ever get the money out of politics? People are, they're trained. They're, they're convinced this is the only way. They're convinced this is the best way. They're convinced of all absolute garbage, nonsense. And it's outdated. It was, when it was written, it was applicable. Okay. When they, when they changed it behind our backs and didn't tell us that, and continued to tell the story of the first document without owning up to, well, but we changed it, and that's not really what you're seeing anymore. How how can you be loyal to a government that that is their very foundation? Misdirection and deception and enslavement. Do this or we will arrest you and make you do it. Or we'll financially punish you until you beg us to let you do it. <laughs> Please take it out of my bank account. Oh, it hurts. Oh, it hurts so much. Oh, take a towel, too, because sometimes the dogs get car sick on their first, you know, nervous. And they're not, you know, they're scared because they don't know what's going on. They're just dogs being moved somewhere. So nice old blanket or a big towel or something poor thing might get a little scared so they have accidents and whatnot but i'm sure you know all that i was just uh, trying to think of something intelligent to say on the dork table program and uh yeah i'm smoking my pipe and my mind is uh it's racing around in all kinds of crazy directions thinking about the uh the state of life that we're in right now. And there are people that are convinced that this, we have the best of the best of the best. When what we have is the worst of what is legal, you know, if they could serve us anything less than they were getting now, they just got to change the law so they can do that. You know, change a number on this chart and change a number on that chart and 
while they poison you. See, the numbers read right here, and you can see that falls right within what's legal while you're laying in a bed dying because you didn't know there was a certain vegetable that would fix that right away. Or maybe an herb. Or is it herb? Herb, herb, herb. Uh, something that grows naturally. Something you could find naturally. If you've got to process something from its original state to another state, then it's probably not going to work. What it'll do uh, might be temporary, but it ain't going to last. Now, the, the food versions of the same things that are supposed to help you through your illness turn out to be end-alls. You, you do this thing, and then whatever the hell the problem was, it stops. Went, wow interesting concept and they really like to fuck with us with blood pressure because not a lot of people understand that a doctor knows how to make you pissed off enough so your blood pressure goes up without you even knowing that's what he's doing that's his job to get you anxious and angry and hot so that he can give you a pill that'll set it all right and if the pill doesn't work and they damn near kill you giving it to you, you know what they'll do? They'll try a different pill. So looking back on all these events that took place, I got to remember this, too, is you guys don't know me. The people that listen to the um, the dork table, I, there's a few folks over on BitChute. There's a few people here in their Spreaker. Um, they don't know me either. So... Just like the government, I'm just another person talking. But the government, you can see the government, and you can fear the government, and you can smell the government. The government and its and its intrusions are with all of us constantly in some form or another, whether it's the the electricity you're using or the the fuel and the liquids you're using to eat and drink with that's government see they've taken over everything under the guise of helping us and, and what they've done is they've convinced uh, um, they've got the classes set so that the poor people aren't ever going to be able to afford to eat a decent uh, meal I guess is the best way to put it and most of what's available through retail outlets to eat fast food and all that stuff's just a bunch of junk. We've all been uh, indoctrinated, I guess, since we was little. I remember being, geez, seven, eight years old, going to the store with a quarter. And I'd get me my RC Cola and I'd get me my candy bar because they had like 10 kinds of candy bars. And I never knew what I'd going to get. And I'd have changed back from a quarter then i could take the bottle back for three cents to get the refund <laughs> or it might have been two cents the small bottle and uh that's how i grew up so eating sweets and all this crap isn't new to me it's an addiction that i've had my whole fucking life that wow i've been called a lot of names but it's it, my addiction to uh, like candy bars and whatnot that i've eaten over the years is probably worse than my addiction to cannabis. And I think my addiction to cannabis serves me a wonderful purpose. I mean, damn, I just hit 59. And although I look 65, I don't feel 59, you know. The um, the bones are working good. The I, I get up and down stairs. I walk to the store and back, carry bag on my back. It, it uh, It's like normal my normal is no different now than it was 30 years ago the uh, the difference is when i started to have the you know when you age you start wearing out your cartilage and you lose cartilage mass and there's only i only thing i've found that, that will work to solve that problem is rose hip the other one was gelatin but i did a little reading on it and i think it's all synthetic i can't find an organic uh, plant fucking form or animal. I mean, it might be an animal form, but then I don't know if I'd want to use it. But rose hip is a plant, so so far so good. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to my little story the guy wrote about 
freedom. Now, here we go. There exists two freedoms, real freedom and fake freedom. Real freedom corresponds to responsibility, taking responsibility, being responsible, and acting responsibly. From this real freedom stems autonomy, self-governance, determination, and conscious decision-making in accord with causing no harm. And it's true, I believe that, because uh, verbal uh, verbal threats, eh, they're just not they're just on the internet any normal day of my life i don't i don't hear any of that cirque would never say any of the crap that uh i've heard in my past you know it's, it's a different completely different world i'm in today than i came from in the states in in north carolina anyway anyhow being responsible entails being responsible for the propagation of the best interest of oneself as well as the defense of oneself from harm. Making choices that are not antithetical toward the self, and that was a hard word, and having the capability to discern the difference between truth and falsehood and be capable to deal with falsehoods being propagated as reality in a stress-free manner. Well, that's what the internet does to us. See? You see what you don't want to see in a light you don't want to see it in, and then you get pissed off. I get pissed off all the time. But because we don't know each other, we only know what we're writing back and forth on the screen. Well, some of them have some radio shows, and you can dig a little deeper and, and see more or less what somebody's like by that. But still, it's just a scratch in the glass, crying out loud. People expect too much out of each other. Okay, let me finish this here paragraph. And where was I? Uh, uh. Not only does this benefit the self, but it overtly benefits those in society because confidence radiates encouragement in a system based on original truth. And the violence is coming from people being directed to be violent i've read that i've seen that the uh, <laughs> this is priceless even the the what you call them so the democrats are getting out there and encouraging the uh the violent kids that are being violent to go out there and be more violent in fact i think i read a meme it's probably not true but the, the idea the idea behind it is believable that Clinton, uh, Hilldog said, uh, the violence will stop when the Democrats regain control. <laughs> no, no, no. That's just not a lot of shit because it doesn't matter who's got control. That's the illusion, whether it's Republican control or Democrat control or, you know, uh, bowel control. It's still not what you think it is. It's always something hidden behind, what is that, the curtain? They got a big curtain, in it, and behind it is this orange-haired fucker He's doing the puppet thing with the bars. And, the, the <laughs> and we're all out here dancing like a bunch of idiots because we can't say no to government. Well, I can say no to government, but for every one person you can find that will say no to government, you find about another, I don't know, 95, 96, 97, that would beg the government to please not go away. Please, government, don't go away. Oh, I need you. Oh, and I'm of the complete opposite. I think that if you would just leave us the fuck alone, that we would have to deal with ourselves. You know, have to deal with the person that you're dealing with. And Common sense comes before violence in most cases in a society that runs on um, emotion. <laughs> I don't know. What do societies run on? Money? Mm. All I know is when I'm downtown and sitting there in the uh, patio thing, they have this big walkway uh, between the two stores. It's like a, big enough to drive a truck through. And they got tables out there to sit at. I grab a beer, just go out there. It's still like 65 degrees. It's not, it's not even 
jacket weather yet here, really. But I go out there and I sit and have me a beer, just enjoy the freaking day. And that's what I see other people doing. You know, see the family with their kids. You see a, a, a man and a woman and sometimes up to four or five kids, usually up two or three. There's smaller families here at the Danes. They don't they don't carry on and make twelve. But things could change. Who knows? <clears throat> but when I'm down there and I see these these people, and uh, I don't feel American, or <clears throat> I feel as though I'm a guest in somebody else's place, you know. And because of that, I just do what everybody else does. And if everybody else throws their cigarette butts on the ground, that's what I'm going to do. And if nobody throws their cigarette butts on the ground, that's what I'm going to do. You just got to be smart enough to look around you and figure out what's going on and try not to be intrusive. You know, I don't get what the big deal about being the center of the fucking world in public is anyway. That's that Trump nonsense. They want helicopters and bands and people waving at him and all this kind of ha- happy ass shit. But how many layers of security has that prick got so that nobody kills him? Because, you know, he's worried about losing his money and his life just like everybody else. Just they, some reason, think he's got more of it. He's got, he's deeper in this cake than I'll ever be. <laughs> so let, let him have his money and his helicopters and his job because wow what it, at the end of the day it ain't worth anything anyway do, none of these people do anything individually that will ever fucking matter they get the, they take the credit for the work of others and they run around and, and wave at people and sign things and this is you know this is your government this is my government here ain't no fucking different but it's a lot smaller see the thing came down to is small community wow once i learned that when i became the owner of the small community concept i think the stress went uh the stress of too many people being around me because i'm not a I'm done with all that. I enjoyed it when I did it, but boy, you people can have it. Except Freetown. Because if Rob works or Woody or Grimner or any of the crew that's, you know, stuck around through all this shit or anybody that's been here so far and went back, want to come back for a, I'll go to Freetown for that one. I don't think, now we, we've had a few guests, but, uh, the first year we were here, I was already in Copenhagen, so going to Freetown wasn't a problem. But once it came out here, it's like, eh, two hours on the train, and I don't, know. I don't want it. See, I started to get all Jewish and said, well, can't we just bring Freetown to me instead? <laughs> and that's that's the end. I didn't expect to be here. 59, I know 59 doesn't sound very old to a... Um, I guess it would if you're young, but if you're in your 50s or you're older than me now, it doesn't sound like no great accomplishment, and it's the surprise I've got from it <laughs> that I, I keep harping on. Not not that it's such a uh, an impossible task. Everybody does it, or they don't, but the ones that do, do. I, I just didn't expect to. I, I didn't expect to wake up this morning and boom, here I am one more day. Go figure. I don't, I have no clue how life works. Got no idea. But according to the reading material, the answer is in you. Not me, you, right? Your answer is your answer. Well, my answer is my answer. And then we try to communicate with each other and just fuck it all up. It just gets out of hand. Because some people want to control what you do. And other people want you to control your damn self and stop putting that responsibility on somebody else. It's fucking it up for everybody else. But they don't see it that way. I guess the uh, maybe the TVs work too well. I mean, I've been watching, I was watching movies today, Cir- Cirque's in the City. So I, I was just doing a jigsaw puzzle and playing some old movies on Amazon. And wow, it's amazing 
how comfortable that we've become with this murder and kidnapping and high-speed chases and shootouts and gangsters and zombies and z what else was there? Oh, man. I've seen every kind of film there was to see in the last 12 hours, I'll tell you that. Um, but we're, we're taught to accept these bizarre behaviors of life, right? Things that are not necessarily good for us, but they're acceptable because, well, there's laws. Well, I gave a lot of thought to this. You got to get caught breaking a law, okay, in the first place. So wouldn't it just be a lot simpler to raise the people to understand these things are not acceptable? No. We're taught to fight and kill and shoot and stab and look at the films. They got little kids doing it. So it, if it's a wonder to anyone why we're in the mess we're in, that's because they're not paying attention. The thing that's holding you back is your compliance and your, uh, what does Grim call that? Your uh, addiction to authority. I don't know if that's you, Grim, but you know authority as I know authority, and we don't care for authority. Uh, I don't even like your authority, but it doesn't stop me from being nice and saying, hey, Grim, can you help me out on the Internet? I have me a problem, blah, blah, blah. And see, that's how life's supposed to freaking work in the first place, you know? You make a crack every now and again, and you ask your buddy to do you a favor, and then your buddy asks you to do a favor. That's how the neighborhood works that I live in. When somebody needs something, they let it be known they need it, and somebody helps them. No hostages. It's it's just you know the way it's done, and it it's really a uh, it's very comfortable. Um, I haven't completely adjusted. I don't think I ev I'll ever let go of, you know, 50, well, about 50 years of America in me. And all this stuff and all the places I went to and all the stuff I saw made me what I am now. And then I come to this completely opposite of what I've lived in all my most of my adult life and ended up back in my childhood. <laughs> it's almost amusing. Not Hannibal. Um. Maybe it's not amusing to you, but it's amusing as hell to me, you know. You have no authority. Well, actually, see, here's the way to look at that. You don't ask for any. You don't demand any. But because of that, when you uh, do something on my computer and say we need to team view, I don't care. I, my problem is keeping my hands off the mouse because I'm so used to handling it when I've got my computer in front of me. And outside of that, it's, yeah, whatever you, you want to do to the computer, you go do it because I trust the Grim. Now, if anybody else was on, want to get on the team view and, you know, I don't know them that well, I might give it a little, eh, well, you know, I know somebody else. Let me, it's not that big a deal right now, but when Grimm's available, it's hey, you'll do. Will you do it? Yeah, okay. So there's how I see authority is me going to it for something that I need to make my day more comfortable, not it knocking on my door demanding fucking money because of some fucking law somebody wrote down on a bit of paper four hundred years ago. And I know I didn't contract to that is worth about, what, 12 cents in an admiralty court. You're, you're fucked talking stupid like that. But I guess the, the, the plan I would have if I ever have to deal with court is uh, to not engage it. And there's lots of links on the Internet to in instruct you on how to behave yourself in a court of law if you ever need to. Because if you go the lawyer route, the lawyer's just working with the judge to skin you and get his cut. And they're not loyal to anyone. They're loyal to the court. The court isn't anyone. The court is a, it's an entity. It's a thing. And as I've gotten older, the older I get, the more ridiculous all these entities uh, appear. You know, government, religion, and 
education. Wow, even Mary has had her fill. I've heard her call edgecraption over and over and over to the point of, wow, <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I overdo certain ideas myself, I'm sure. And being on the side that agrees with it, like like uh, my peers in radio, Grim and Moose and Mary and Vinny, the people that I know, you know, um, it matters. It doesn't matter on a global scale. It matters to me. See, that's the the part of the world I had to separate from was the make believe of it that wants to consume all the time I got left in life sitting around finding ways to beat it you know you're not going to beat government that's not what government's for government is clearly mind control to get you to give people what they want and they will go to any length to disguise it as help for you but it never is i yet to find anybody that's ever said outside of winning a lawsuit that the government was worth a fuck, but if they beat them in court, then it was good. Me, I wouldn't want to fight them in court. I don't want to fight anyone anywhere about anything at all, period. Sick of all that shit. I mean, crying out loud. Where does all that... <clears throat> I can't... Outside of the, the MSM and the movies and whatnot, I, in a, my daily life... I don't see any anything that leans towards a violent act or uh, anything dishonest. People, people are just more accountable in the little place where I'm living. And I guess the, the folks that drift in and out, coming through or passing by or whatever have you, I, maybe they're all Danes too. I don't know what the fuck is going on. It's just too good to actually be believable. So... I understand why people... I finally hit me today about that. I was wondering, wow. It's so nice here. I wonder why the rest of the world doesn't get it. And then I remembered living in the city where, you know, you had to lock your door and lock your this and lock your car and lock your lock and get insurance and worry about this and worry, 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 worry. And I've not had to do that for so long. I, I guess I discounted it and... Uh, I kind of overlooked, you know, because I'm not living in your life. I don't know what kind of stress you might go through just trying to get to a job like Moose. Moose is, you know, always saying something about it, you know, having to go to work, having to go to work, having to go to work. And I didn't come from that having to go to work side of that. Not that I didn't have to. It's just I had a, a an interest in what I was doing for money or I, I wouldn't do it. And nah, don't want to do that. Or if somebody needed what I could do and they couldn't do it themselves, that was, and still, and again, when I, I was trying to help somebody else and still make a little bit of money for helping them, it was never like grudging and, oh, look what I got to do. It was an agreement between me and whoever to, you know, get a job done for a price. <clears throat> now, somehow the system managed to, Hustle people into thinking that they got to do this work five, what, five days a week, eight hours a day, do that for 30 years and get a pension. And But by the time I was a teenager, I saw the uh, UAW fall apart. I hadn't even, st I hadn't even been at UAW for a year and a half and they shut the plan I was in at, that I was working at down. So, you know, at an early age, what, I was 19 and a half. And already realized that what the government was going to do to us wasn't going to be good. But I didn't understand it in that light. That was going to take a few more years. But it got the point. You know, they just cut us all loose. Said, oh, no more job. Bye-bye. Thanks for all the help. And that was it. So. And it was really. Uh, excuse me. I hit time. At the time, it was a good paying job, cat, you know, to have to work for Ford Motor Company. They didn't, they uh, treated their employees as far as for a, a company that size. Ford was pretty good about how they treated the the people that worked for them. 
financially. And so when they folded that company, and that told me they were doing all these good things, and all of a sudden they're not doing them anymore. Wow, what's going to happen? Well, of course, if you get if you lose something, you have to replace it. But what you replace it with will never be better than what you lost. That's the nature of this freaking game we're in. They give you something that's good, then they fucking cut it, cut it down, and what's left isn't enough for everybody that's there. <laughs> you guys got to fight over it. And no, I don't. I don't. It's either that or be a lawyer and screw people for a living. Which, in a sense, I don't. I don't think it's, uh, it's on the surface of it. It's not so black and white. There's lots of ways to look at law and think you're helping people. And maybe because of the size of the populations, there are ways that that show their self. But the corrupt and the, the misguided and the, the, the control freaks in that sphere, I guess, have fucked it up so bad that how can you trust them? I mean... It's your word against theirs, for one, and they're looking for people. You know, they're not just, they don't have a list. Oh, John Smith, Steve Harvey, and and, and Eric Johnson, and we're going to go out and we're going to turn this town upside down until we find them. No, they turn everybody upside down until they find them. That's not how law was supposed to work where I come from. That's what it became. And trying to explain this side of, uh, I guess, freedom <laughs> to to the modern day mind that's afraid of terrorists, niggers, specks, Jews, pansies, and a booger eating moron. <laughs> but, but see, that's what we were given. We we've been groomed into where we are right now by a. A society lying with every breath they've ever had. <laughs> uh, well, Mary tried to, to get on the local thing, and she found out even at that level, there's still a lot of corruption, and it's it's done within the guidelines of the laws is all that is. They just write the laws so they can bend the freaking thing, and, oh, well, we'll get away with it and take our money and let them fuck with it 20 years from now. Well, 20 years from now came, about 20 years ago, maybe longer, and still they keep propping this crap up. Well, where do I want to go with that one is uh, Karen Hughes going against the uh, Federal Reserve Bank. And I'm not, I'm not saying that she's telling a lie, but I'm just saying that you got to hear what she has to say and wonder if, if it's true, why is she still alive? Not that what she's talking about isn't true. It's that there's anything legally that any of us can do about this. This thing is so big that you would need a, a population of people. You need a group, a huge fucking group to go against it. The problem is the people that profit off it are the ones that are never going to go against it. They're, they are it. <laughs> So, and they got the rest of us going, hey, that guy's doing this and that guy's doing that. Just like a good little slave would, because why not be more interested in what you're doing than, you know, I could sit here week in and week out and bitch about Donald J. Trump, because I don't care for the fella. Not that I met him, but what I did see of Donald Trump. When I was in Jersey, I was not impressed. And that was in 1979. But because average Joe doesn't know he was a banker shill to get New York out of trouble in 19, what, 1980? Maybe even before that. Uh, they gave him a fucking shitload of money to renovate buildings. Why him? Why not, Why just him? He was related to all the right people. And, of course, he was a big Trump fan, or Trump fan. He was a big Hillary <coughs> and Bill fan for years and years. Carried those people around in his pocket. Loved them a lot. Then he became the president, and now we don't love her no more. 
<laughs> easy come, easy go. <laughs> it's just a reminder, reinforces the message. Uh, yes, Frumpy's talking about his link he's posting on the reallibertymedia.com. Anyway, oh, wow. Yeah, he's talking about food. They're chitter-chattering about what they're going to have for dinner tonight on the reallibertymedia.com. That's that's usually where I, I go to read chitter-chatter and stuff. Lately, I've been um, disappointed. Uh, people like to argue and, uh, what's the right word? Bully, brag. You know, oh, I got this and I got that and I got this and oh, I'm so wonderful. And they forget, you know, to me, your uh, lines on a screen. I never met you. I don't know you. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So the first thing I'm reading is about how many guns you got. Okay. There you go. I'm impressed. Now what? You know? Not hello, not fuck you, but I got a bunch of guns. So, mm. guns is going to get you guys probably going to do the most damage in the end. I mean, what? There was, how many people got shot in Vegas? Now, they claim like, um, what, 50 dead or something like that? 450 injured, blah, 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 blah. That's a lot of people to shoot by yourself. I don't know. That guy must have been like the world's greatest gunman better than me anyway maybe i'll just uh drift off into uh uh maybe like a a slower state of being than i'm at night right now and just slow down and let let this uh let this illusion that i read about daily just let it go by like i always have because my input in it didn't tilt it any and my not liking it doesn't uh, doesn't persuade anybody else not to like it. Never expected that. Shit, I've always been the outcast. That's what the dork table was about. My opinions about everything have always been the uh, smallest margin of agreement possible. Never been in the majority about anything. You know, right down to the dueling. I say bring back dueling because people would recognize, oh man, this isn't important enough to shoot you for. All right, I stole you some money here. Here, let me give it back. Let's start over. People would reason things out. I don't think very many people would take it to the point of actually going out into a fucking field and shooting at each other. And them that did deserve their fate. I mean, that that's freedom. If you want to be a psychotic fuck, You should be allowed the opportunity to do it within the confines of your society, whatever your society dictates. Well, the group societies that we have, they all frown on the killing, but they're all for the bombing. (laughs) I don't I don't get it. You know, they don't want you to kill anyone, but they got a death sentence if you do in a few states. (laughs) Like in Texas, if you kill a Texan, they'll kill you right back. They got a fucking assembly line in Texas. And sadly, they're proud of it. And and not for the right reasons, of course, which be, well, they killed us, so we killed them back. But because we do more than anybody else. (laughs) Instead of going back to the original idea, which would be, why don't you teach people to be human beings uh, instead of animals. But they don't. They train us all to be a bunch of bloodthirsty, insulting, negative Nelly fucking whiners. I mean, Christ, the left gets on the... I'm on mine earlier today, too. And the left memes are all whining about the right. And the right memes are all whining about the left. So what's the difference? Both sides can show you how the other side is a piece of shit. Well, wait a minute. That's called misdirection, isn't it? Hmm. If you're going to point out their flaws and ignore your own, there must be a good reason. And when I realized that both sides do the same thing, I went, fuck. Poor Ron Paul's never going to get an audience. These people are fighting over nothing. 
They're fighting over the definition of the color blue. And that's about all it boils down to. But they've taken it into areas that are really personal. Sex and uh, what else? Oh, safe zones. You can't say this to me. Uh, gender speak or some kind of shit coming out of the colleges where people don't identify as he and she anymore. <laughs> I don't. I don't associate with them folks. So for me, all this is just a giggle on the damn internet. I, I don't really know if it's real or not anymore. That's what I mean is the internet has cheapened uh, the experience completely so that whatever you want to see, you can see. If It doesn't matter what it is. It's there somewhere. Your job is just to click a button and find it. Now, what I like the best part is that the computer has learned how to uh, read your tastes and send you towards what it wants you to see. I opened up a link about the Federal Reserve yesterday, I think it was, and I am anti-Federal Reserve Bank, go away, suck, you know, go, go away. Anyway, and what do I find? I find a link propping up the damn Federal Reserve Bank and how it works and it's for America, da 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 and all this kind of crap. When it's owned by a bunch of European fuckers that own me and Cirque, because we live in you know Scandinavia, so you know our ties are closer to the people that own you than yours are. But you get lied to. You get a good story. Oh, you got a president and a Congress, and oh, look at all the good things that these people do. Okay, well, you know if you look back every fucking time. The last guy before just got caught stealing again. You know, the Trumps ain't got caught yet. That's all. They're the ones in the seat. Before, okay, it was Obama. You couldn't say anything about him because then then you were racist if you said a bad word about Obama. Okay, so they played the nigger card on Obama. But before Obama, there was Bush. Okay, And again, the guy could do anything he fucking wanted. He invaded foreign countries at will. And people just said... Okay, George. Oh, uh, that looks pretty good, George. Uh, yeah. Which way do you want us to bomb, George? And it went on in Obama. Now it's in the Trump. And the same thing that happened with the George. And I'm only going back to to keep it shorter. Uh, the the repeat is oh well the 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 POTUS in the seat at the time is never guilty of any crime. He's always well look at what he's doing for us. Well, yeah, like Syria. <laughs> Oh, crying out loud. And see, Syria will be uh, uh, a Libya in five more years when Trump's out of there and you can't blame him anymore. Just like, you know, uh, well, except Clinton took credit for Libya. That was, yeah, she was, wow. I don't even know what to say about Clinton. She's just evil. Nah, I, see, there you go. The, the duality thing, the good and the bad. Maybe not. Maybe she's just an opportunist with uh, absolutely no redeeming social qualities. Being, I mean, Christ, she never got elected to anything. You know, she killed her way to the top. Everybody that can read knows that. And here we are. And people that support the guy that's holding the seat today think that because he writes a few nasty tweets to this female, that. Their business ties are finished. <laughs> you know, all we know is what we're told. I don't know how much money Donald Trump has. I don't know how much money Clinton has. All I know is I keep reading things for over the last 40 years, 50 years, that indicate to me that what I read is never what is true. So, mm. what is Java Doctor talking about now? He's on things about... Taxes. Just giving you a giggle there, Java. Um, I don't know. Just on random rants about nothing in particular, flip-flopping around in the galaxy on the dork table, uh, and not feeling particularly left out of the world, but definitely uh, separated from it. You know, like me and Vinny are doing this new thing on called In a Perfect World. It's hard for me to grasp the what he's trying to do because he keeps getting me and uh, hitting me on a serious note and I keep fucking up the show because of it. 
because we're supposed to be arguing, not agreeing about shit. But I oftentimes let the the truth just is whatever it is, however I see it. it doesn't mean it's true to you. It means it's true to me. So I can't sit here and think that George Bush or Obama ever spoke to me. They were never speaking to me. But what they were doing was speaking for me in my absence because they're the POTUS. And uh, nah, I didn't want any involvement in the decisions that they make about the shit they make them about in the first place. If they weren't lying about all this crap, we wouldn't have the results we have now. I know, reruns, say that again, I'm going to pop you in your forehead. But I believe it to be true. You know, it's like growing these plants. If I follow the directions that other people have taken the time, like I got this avocado seed, right? I wanted to see if I could grow me an avocado seed. But the first thing I thought of is, how the hell do you grow an avocado seed? So I went to the YouTube and I looked up growing an avocado seed and I got a link and I've talked about this before but the damn thing is still it's still developing into its next phase of flower and it sprouts from the bottom first and then you get a leaf coming up the top and my my shell just split I just noticed it today that it just split but so what I mean is these little things watching a seed grow I would have give two flying fucks about that 10 years ago I didn't have time. What are you? What are you crazy? I got to get this thing done and do this, that, and the other. And now here I am, and I've got the time in my day to pay attention to how a seed grows, and I think that's my success because I didn't come from it. You know, I came from fast and hurry up and get this, get that done. To ah, and there you go, enjoying my. Uh, Enjoying my life on my own terms is very simple. I think we all do that to, for the most part. It's when you get out in these fucking societies and they got these idiots with these fucking guns and badges that have no idea what, for one, they don't know what they're doing. If you asked them what laws they're, they're arresting people for and told them you wanted a definition, they couldn't give it to you. So... Right there. Plus the SCOTUS. Oh, that was another thing. That SCOTUS ruling about the police have no duty to protect you. Okay, that tells you everything you need to know right there. No duty to protect you. Why are you talking to them? Because you're being held against your will. And if you don't believe it, try walking away when they want to talk to you. And whether or not they think you broke a law or you didn't have your seatbelt on or whatever the crack tail like crap they got up their sleeve they hit it with a billy club walking to you nobody is gonna ever know oh they got dash cams yeah try getting one of those in court <laughs> when you go to admiralty court like uh rob works had eddie craig on his he they did a, a really good show about texas law on uh, traffic law and the guy was explaining these things and how how you can avoid, but state to state they're different. <laughs> we're wow, we're all in this great big. It's it's kind of like a trap. Maybe our open air what, open air prison is pretty. It's a pretty good description of it. Where we walk around and we do this and that, but see, prison is about keeping you within boundaries. So if you ever want to. F- See if you're not imprisoned. Try moving beyond what is acceptable as a boundary and see how far you get. And you won't because we're in open air prisons and people are conformed to it. They live they live for it. They they want it. They want their cell phones. They want the internet. I think I could do all right without it. I'm not too concerned about the internet one way or the other. If it's here, I'll use it. If it's gone, I'm going to start probably painting. I do some, I don't know, cartoon work on wood for something different that I haven't done and uh, get on with life. But we have a, a society of people that, boy, if the cell phones went down, their life is, oh, 
My wife's one of them. Because the Danish system makes it so that you need the cards to uh, succeed basically in public without walking. <laughs> My wife doesn't like to walk. She likes the train. <laughs> so she has to comply. Hey, Frumpy, you have a good one. And uh, all like that. Wait, is, wait a minute. No, he's asking questions. It must be Beetle. Beetle's going to go do some Ruth is nasty on toast. I don't have a clue. But I can always go back to reading my story of freedom that I stole from the guy over on Minds.com. It was really good. And then not reading it all together. And I guess that's kind of, I'm not giving him credit, but I'm giving him credit. You know, I, I was honest. I didn't write any of this. This was his shit. And he wrote a, wrote, Hey, Hannibal. And he did a really good job writing it. Anyway, while on the other hand is the fake freedom, which is the prevalent freedom touted in America today, 200 plus years ago, the inhabitants of what is today called the USA, a great lot of them, knew real freedom. And the example I draw from is... The Articles of Confederation, the Declaration of Independence, the Orations of Patrick Henry, and the writings of Thomas Paine from his pamphlet entitled Common Sense. These are men and many others from that generation who were staunch individualists in tune with both physical and non-physical reality, mind and matter. Well, you know, how come it's so easy for some people to look at the mess that we're in and understand that there this is not a good thing but for other people they look at the mess that we're in but they blame it on consequences of the mess that we're in not what caused the mess that we're in some of the things i see people snivel about the most are byproducts of having a government you're going to they insist on growth they can't fucking ever get enough these greedy fucking cunts will not stop so, of course, you're gonna, they think they're going to grow like a business. It's not a for-profit business. Every penny these fuckers spend is off the sweat of you. I could say me, but then it just pisses people off because I'm not in the States to share your burden, you know. But, right, it's all off the collective sweat, you know, the backs of others mentality and then they break it down and make it look like one side is more giving than the other side when both sides fuck you equally republican or democrat independent whatever group you're in it's it's not it's not working it's not working because it's not designed to work it's designed to do what it does make an obsolete economy you know it's throwaway you make junk so that people will buy a lot of it, so that you can make a lot of trash. It's wasteful, but they make a lot of profit doing it this way. Or as opposed to doing it a correct way, maybe use a product like hmm, hemp, maybe. You know, the evil devil's lettuce. If they made a fucking suit out of hemp, it would last you forever. You'd have to throw it away out of being bored of wearing it. It wouldn't wear out. Well, how would these fashion idiots survive if people were uh, accustomed to buying clothes every couple of years? If they felt like it, not because they were, you know, conned into it with this synthetic shit and crap that they sell us, but something that was really good. I have a dream. <laughs> I have a dream. <laughs> anyway, I don't have any crazy dreams about any of that ever happening. All I'm saying is I do believe it could be fixed if certain uh, thought processes, a certain kind of thought process would have to take take shape, you know. And it would have to be a collect, collective movement, one person alone, myself, for example. I can't do shit. No, but fuck. How many people give a fuck what I think about anything in the first place, let alone... <clears throat> How can they see my example through a radio show? <laughs> but 
But on the good side, um, I love my wife. I love my dog. You know, uh, I don't hurt anyone. People I know, people I encounter on a daily basis, uh, they smile and wave when I come and go. So, and it's been that way for years. It's not like, wow, I'm brand new. Now I'm like a, a just part of the scenery now. I'm I'm uh, comfortable here. And I like it. And now when they trade, uh, the kids come in, you know, about every year, a kid will work to, at the grocery store for about a year. It's like some kind of a um, training to get somewhere else. But they use the grocery store. And the kids that are, have been come in and are speaking English to me before I meet them. So that, like the last ones, the other kids before me, hey, you got this American guy. He's really bad with the Danish. <laughs> so if you want to talk to him, speak English. <laughs> and they and they still, to this day, four years, uh, we've been here four years now, that they still do. They treat me the same now as they did when I got here. And I watch America's news, you know, not the news, but the links from America and the stuff. It just seems like it's all decaying, you know. You got people like Mary that are uh, doing much better by getting away from the mainstream, and you know she had to lose a job to find out. Man, she went she said she went back to work. She took a job again, but I don't know. She said she had to work today, so she's not around for the dork table. I have more fun doing the dork table with her than I do doing it by myself, though. I wonder what that's about. Amy, let me see if I can't. I'm running out of ideas in my little mind. I have to go back to my friend, Illuminous Sovereign, and read more of Fake Freedom and the Old World Order. You see, this fella says, Fake Freedom is the freedom to consume anything, regardless of how unhealthy it is for the person or how much grief it causes to the conscious thoughts of the person consuming that garbage fake freedom is the freedom to be lazy to do the least amount of thinking possible and rely on so-called experts to figure all things out fake freedom is the freedom to be an unfulfilled human who prefers to sit back and watch others live he spends endless hours in undiscriminating television viewing Fake freedom is using violence and coercion to propagate something called freedom. I have news for the advocates of this false freedom notion. It's called look at the damage you have done to the spirit of your fellow men and women. Are you happy yet? (laughs) Or should I ask if you are fake happy or real happy? And do you discern the difference? Real freedom is having the free will ability to choose something without fear. Fake freedom is being coerced into pre-designated options under duress. Real freedom is being truly educated, given the tools to learn how to learn for oneself on one's own, confidently, while fake-ass freedom is being told what is true and going along with it, being told a declarative sentence and accepting it without question. Yeah, boy, that he's going on. Doesn't he go on and on and on about that. Um, fake freedom. Yeah, I, I was saying something similar to that about the movies because you know while I was doing this jigsaw puzzle, I broke out, but I was playing mo- movies in the background to have you know sound something coming out of a machine, so I wouldn't just be sitting here in silence. But wow, when I, <clears throat> when I. Re- I've heard other people read this. Now I've read it myself. Now I'm reading it myself. And the more the more I read of it, the more I understand what I'm reading. Because I too believe in the group think will fuck you in your group ass. But, you know, the funny part about it is if you get screwed through a group, it's you getting screwed, not the group. So... Dark isn't the word for it, sport. Anyway. Yeah, Grimm's chitter-chattering with the Hansel about Moose's new adoption. I wonder what she's going to get. 
should probably get something like a Jack Russell. She strikes me as, you know, like a, what would that be, like a terrier kind of dog, Jack Russell. They're they're middle-sized. They're not big, but and they're smart as shit, too. They can be smart little poochers, but I don't know. What was Marty? Do you remember what kind of dog Marty was? I never saw the pictures of him, but I got her to tell me his name once. When uh, you guys were doing the Freaker's Ball on a Friday night, and I asked her, Hey, what is your dog's name? Because she would say, My dog, my dog, my dog. (laughs) Not me. I say Hannibal Lecter because my dog has a name. Hey, she's a good slave. Wow. Anyway, so where are we at on this? Anyway, so he goes on. My issue with fake-ass freedom is that it is not truth and leads to destruction. It is a master deception, a lie. The lie is that if you surrender or sacrifice some of your liberty, someone else will take on your responsibility to decide what is best for you and society as a group. An obvious example of this is legislators. At oh, at all times, legislators will to legislators will to remove individual freedom for the best interest of the group. Yeah, they sure will. Because to this day there's still people that'll fight tooth and nail with you about a fucking seatbelt and you know I think that should be an individual liberty that if you want to drive, which isn't even driving, but if you want to operate a motor vehicle for no profit, that you shouldn't be forced to strap yourself into the damn thing if you don't want to. But that, again, it's an it's an old guy freedom. We, we lost all that with this. Uh, the last 40 years have just been exhausting. These fucking people, what... What little bit of uh, freedom they have left, they want to give that away, too. They don't even know what the fuck it is. I don't think they know the difference between um, feeling and thinking. I think that they're confusing one with the other, or maybe they're not thinking and they're just having a bunch of feelings because the results are just sad, beyond sad. I don't even know what word to call it. It's disgraceful. No, that's judgment. Let's see. Oh, we got presents. We got presents. Ma. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse me. While I go back to my story of woe. Wait a minute. I was saying hi to my wife and I got lost in all my wild drug induced looking. Okay, now we're going to go collectivism. Collectivism is the age-old idea that some are meant to rule while others are meant to be ruled. (laughs) Yeah, that. Leonard Peikoff illustrated this point beautifully in his book, The Objectivist. The philosophy of collectivism upholds the existence of a mystic and unperceivable social organism while denying the reality of perceived individuals. Boy, man, ain't that the truth? Do we not get fucking screwed in that individual thing? Everybody in their fucking rights. And then the first thing they do is say, I got a constitution. Well, no, you don't. You gave that up in September of 2001, or did you forget? Or maybe it was November when they really took it. But, you know, the action to that, was in in September and the reality of what that was all about came in November and boy the individual got slapped hard that day and since too now they spy on you openly now they tell you that they're doing it now they're doing things that are so far beyond permission because average Joe doesn't even know what the fuck facial recognition means average Joe ain't going to ever face facial recognition equipment in the first damn place Unless they use them at the grocery store. (laughs) Anyway, so back to my back to my reading. I this is more fun than I thought it would be. (laughs) Didn't lose my place. Uh, Okay. 
Mm, collectivism maintains that an elite endowed with special mystic insight should rule men, which implies the existence of an elite source of knowledge, a fund of revelations inaccessible to logic and transcending the mind. Collectivism denies that men should deal with one another by voluntary means, settling their disputes by a process of rational persuasion, it declares that men should live under the reign of physical force, as wielded by the dictator of the omnipotent state, a position which jettisons reason as the guide and arbiter of human relationships. From every aspect, the theory of collectivism points to the same conclusion. Collectivism and the advocacy of reason are philosophically antithetical. It is one or the other. Yeah, well, you know, people want their bread buttered on both sides they really believe that they can get it too wonder where they get ideas like that <laughs> well i guess believing that you live under a constitution and waking it up in an admiralty court jail would be a wonderful indoctrination for mr constitution i have a funny feeling that Mr. Constitution, you know, Mr. Oh, I've got my Bill of Rights. I got a copy right here in my pocket. Look at this. Ah. I bet he would be really fucking surprised to find out that uh, the system does not pay any attention to you at all when you are incarcerated. Oh, no. That's what your lawyer is for. <laughs> you are in for the ride of your life, sir. But. The, the beauty of this whole game, though, is they got people, see, divide and conquer. You got your prosecution, and then you got your defense. So there's your, your divide right there. Then you got the judge, and the judge just decides who he had the best golf game with, and that's the guy that won that case. And there ain't shit you can say or do about it. Oh, you can appeal. But that case is going to stand regardless until it goes to another judge who's going to do the same fucking thing. But they don't tell you that. That's not what they tell you. But there is proof to my accusations. There are many, many links that tell you all about what really goes on in the life that you think you're living. Most folks don't want to know, though. They prefer to sit in the dark and count their bullets. By God and country... My bullets will speak for me. And I know better than that, but apparently they don't. I mean, has anybody noticed that when you go up against the United States of America that you don't win? They got everybody. Al Capone. Get got Al Capone. <laughs> Put him in prison. I think he got syphilis in Alcatraz. Died a freaking lunatic in Miami. Couldn't even lose a game of cards without losing his mind because his, his mind was ate up with syphilis. Well, of course, they don't want to say that he got it in in, a, in Alcatraz, but I don't know. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he had it when he went into Alcatraz. Can you, can you last seven years with um, a good dose of syphilis? Who is to know? Hey, maybe there's a cam. Kami to... to what? Tutional... Oh, Constitutional Republic. <laughs> Grimner's being funny. Hey, Grim, I know, but as long as, you know, John Average doesn't fucking believe you or me, then the, the system continues, and it does what it wants to, and it plays its little games. You know, there's no beating it. You can, you can either pretend in your mind somehow that you participate in that shit when you don't, and it's obvious to people that are watching, you're not participating in anything. You're a victim of a far bigger game than you can comprehend. And uh, it's kind of sad. I mean, I know I laugh at it and make jokes and all that kind of shit. But to be indoctrinated and a part of that machine would can't be good. I mean, it's maybe it's good to the person that's doing it because they're violent and they want to kill and shit. But... To the rest of us that just want to get along and, you know, uh, see their wife before they go to sleep at night and whatnot. But there's little more people that seem to want other people to be dying and hungry and they're not slaving hard enough. And 
whatever the argument is. I mean, we're just living backwards. So as long as we've got the uh, the present shit to deal with, well, then I guess we're going to have to deal with it. But my present is bitching. <laughs> I'll tell you, I don't, I'm not homesick, guys. Uh, I don't want to come back to the States. I like a lot of you, the RLM crew and people that over that, uh, you know, I'm related to and whatnot, old friends, but I don't want to go back. And I got, I got friends in the States that have been here to visit, uh, a friend in the States that came here to visit. So I'm like doing better than I thought. And then the Canadian, the Canadian came twice and then my brother came once. So that's two Americans. Two Americans, a Canadian, and a Kiwi. So I've yet to get, uh, uh, like, anybody from South America. That would be kind of cool. Hey, visit me from South America. But I'm going to settle for whatever does happen. It's always, it's, it's enough, you know. Plenty is just good. Got no problem with plenty. But too much, too much rots. You know, if you buy too much uh, of something that you can't eat in a, enough, in the quicker, like bananas. If I got too many bananas, I can't eat them all in one period of time, then they're going to go bad. So it's my responsibility to keep track of stupid little mundane things like that. And what I found out is by doing that, my health has improved a lot. I've taken a lot of Grammy Mary's advice over the years I've known her on the radio. I mean, outside of asking her specifically, what do I do? I've got a problem. And she'll help me with that. But beside that, there's a a lot of times she'll just do a show and be talking about something. And then I can find how it applies to the additives I'm using now to improve things today. And I keep getting better. I know it's bragging and what uh, mental pancakes is going to give me shit about that. But if I have a good result, how do I deliver a good result without bragging about it? That's just kind of common. Mental just kind of gets on my case about how I do it, I suppose. Oh, they're chitter chattering in the RLM. Come on down. We're getting ready to close out the dark table. But let me finish reading this guy's thing on freedom. I would only disagree with his calling collectivism a philosophy because collectivism is actually the absence of philosophy, the destruction of sound reason, which in turn flows toward foolishness, not wisdom. And yes, that is a declarative statement, but it's true. And at this point, I would encourage you to please involve yourself in the study of that truth and come to your own understanding and promote that understanding far and wide to assist others in the inquiry necessary in gaining accuracy of navigation throughout our shared reality. Yeah, well, just two sides to this, violent and nonviolent, period. Nonviolent people don't want to be killing other people. Violent people want to kill people. Sadly, we're we're all lumped, mixed up together. There's no separation of that. There's a se- separation for every fucking thing else, but not the uh, the warlike and the, the non-warlike. No, we're we're just all lumped together like a big like soup. <laughs> you feel like a soup, and it's cooking. You know, you can feel that heat coming up on you, and it's, Wow. Well, I was getting ridiculous with that one. But hey, it's still, it's like, it's not real. You know, it's too bullshitty for me. Concrete and still only goes so far. You know, if it sparkles too much, I'm not sure what I'm looking at anymore. I like things to be uh, realistic, not dull, just... Uh, if you haven't noticed, Cirque hasn't been home yet. And have you heard Hannah bark one time? Nah. Two hours, the dog's been sitting with me, calm and patient. But my wife is a little excitable, and she brings that barking stein out of my dog. So that's why all this time you've been hearing her bark, because Cirque's around. <laughs> anyway, uh, and with that, we're coming up to the... Uh, 
the closing point of my two-hour therapy session with the RealLibertyMedia.com. And the doctor says, don't kill anyone. You're going to be fine. Just don't go out and murder anyone at, at, for no particular reason. Well, I know. I guess if you're going to, you're going to. But I don't know anybody that would cop to that. What you going to do, Johnny? I'm going to go out and just kill somebody at random for no particular reason. Just feel like it. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. Anyway, so uh, what is this? Saturday, tomorrow morning in the morning time, you got Grimner comes on and he plays some blues. Blues. Now, sometimes I'm watching films and sometimes I listen to the blues. But if I'm in the blues... I listen to Grim play them. <laughs> hey, thanks, Grim. And, uh, yeah, that, yeah, wow. Words are so wonderful. Yeah. Anyway, after that, then we do the trivia thing where Lightning Fingers and his gang of lightning fast nerds stomp the squat out of the rest of us because they're good. <laughs> but, a good time is had by all because, well, we're just a competitive lot of nerds, I suppose. <laughs> then after that, you got Hal Anthony. He comes on with the behind the woodshed at whatever. I think it's like three o'clock on the three o'clock. Ah, fuck the times. I I'm in Denmark. I I'll screw that all up. And then there, is it tomorrow night? You got a new show coming on with Art Underground. I don't know. I mentioned it last week that somebody wrote the wrong date and I got knocked around for it. So I don't know. There's a show coming and he's doing music on Tuesday and Thursdays too. Then in the middle, you got Grammy with the rocket chair blasting off all over the place. And I'm telling you her to me, I've known Mary a while and what, how she says things is way more important than what she says. And her tone has definitely shifted yet again, in my opinion. And that wild woman is, is back on her rocket chair flying around in places that most people won't ever see. <laughs> I heard her. She said she's an anarchist. And we all understand it's a state of mind. It's not like... A group you join, or it's different than that. It's a it's a way of looking at the things that we're facing. It's not a not a political defense or an attack. It's just a stand. This is what I want. Leave me alone. I leave you alone. Everybody go home. A very happy, nice, nice. But you know, I don't know. There's a lot of warmongers out there bragging about guns and killing and all that stupid shit. But. They've been around forever, so I guess they won't be going anywhere any too soon. Then after Thursday night, you're back to music again. Then on Friday, then you got Grammy again. Yeah, two times. She's going to double dose you. And uh, after Grammy, then comes the Freakers Ball. <laughs> now, Grim plays music on the Freakers Ball, and you can watch that live with the videos, but... I can't replay it. You can only, if you watch it live, though, that 5 o'clock in the morning sometimes is a little too much of a stretch for me. I don't want to get up that early. But I have on a, on a few times, and it's worth it when I do. I do like the old rock and the old blues and some of the other weird shit that you play that's not neither. I like some of that, too. But, you know, interpretation, Grimner. It's all the last hit. Ah, oh, just a matter of taste. And <clears throat> you know, if if you don't like what you're doing, uh, don't do it. And uh, I'd like to say thanks a lot to Miss B from way down under. She sent me something on the Skype this morning. And if you hear this, B, I tried to send you a message. I couldn't open it because we're on such odd times. We don't connect very often in person. Sometimes I send her a message through the radio. Anyway, with all that said and done, it's been real fun. And uh, we're going to get off the air right about 